Hey, and welcome back. And we're along with Seth McBroom, the coach of the Hawkham Hornets basketball team. And Seth, it's good to have you back with us. Appreciate it, man. Love coming up here and getting to hang out with you. Sure. And a big game you got last <laughs> night, or a big win you got last night over the Risco Tigers. And I tell you, Risco's been one of the top teams in our area here early on, and they they took just their first loss over last weekend over in Illinois, but still undefeated here in Missouri. And your boys really came out and played well last night. Well, that was a big game for both of us. I mean. Highly anticipated match, and, and we just really like playing those guys. And, and it seems like we have a great game every time we play them. And they're well coached, and they play as hard as anybody around. And hats off to them. I mean, I thought they played well. It was at our place, and it's always tough to go on the road, and especially in the Tri County. Those games are very uh, heated and highly contested, no matter where you go. So, uh, hats off to them too for fine seasons thus far. So. Yeah, and they, like you said, it's a Tri-County Conference matchup, and you you two have proved to be the top two teams in the conference, and you've played once already back in at the start of the season at Bernie Invitational Tournament in the finals and suffered a loss in that by 10. But uh, I tell you, your players seem like they were very prepared and of the pressure that Risco brings, especially off or defensively, and seemed like you handled the ball a lot better this time around. Didn't turn it over as much, and right. didn't let Risco get into that full court game and score right. off those turnovers. Well, they're extremely good at what they do, and that's you know a testament to the coach and their kids, and and they're hard to play against. I mean, just call it what it is. They're hard to play against. If you know we play two different styles, we 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 can go fast at times, but we really like to slow it down uh, when we when we need a basket or we need to swing the momentum. And uh, they make you play fast. And you know, it, and even at times last night they would get us playing fast, and then sometimes we could get them to slow down. And and uh, you know, that's just that's just them. I mean, they're just hard to play against. And and you know, we we had a couple of days to prepare and. And, you know, uh, early in the year they got us. I think we had well over 20 turnovers early in the year. I mean, I think 24 or 25 that first game, and that's, that's a little uncharacteristic of us. But, uh, you know, it was it was a lot of, lot to do with them. And then last night I, I think we were more around that, you know, seven, 15 to 17 range. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of average. So that had a lot to do with it, not turning the ball over. Because in the open court, they're, I mean, they're as good as anybody around, you know. Sure, you, it seemed like on the defensive end, you really made it difficult for them to score. They had to take a lot of outside shots, and not turning the ball over helps with that, not letting them get easy <coughs> baskets and right. starting to push a lead ahead. So you basically kind of slowed them down, played them in the half court, and you know made it to where they had to hit right. difficult shots. And I tell you, they hit some tough shots last night. I know Chris Pavey there in the fourth quarter, it looked like he was going to basically you know make a run at right. beating y'all just himself he had about three or four threes in a row he, he really had the hot hand yeah he's an excellent player and he was just rising up there at times and and shooting difficult shots and and we had tried we had kind of prepared about for that uh, you know the day before and they we had broken down a couple times on a couple a couple other plays where he got some threes off but late in the game the kids executed a little bit better but uh you know, going back to the what you're talking about, us trying to make some adjustments and stuff, you know, each team has certain ways they score, and, and they've got a lot of ways, you know. And, and, you know, when I wrote them up on the board, I was sitting there thinking, man, that's, they can score a lot of different ways. And, uh, you know, we had to try to take some of that away. We had to try to take something away. We, you know, don't have a voice today because I, was, I think that's the most I've yelled in any game this year. And I think half the time everything I was saying was, get back, get back, you know, and, and – uh, they get back uh, because they, they can, can uh, run it. <laughs> they can dribble it. You know, I told the kids, you know, they'll they'll get it out of the net even when you make a shot. And when you think you're hustling back, they might dribble by you and pat you on the back and say, "Hey, see you later," you know, and shoot a layup on you. So we had to really concentrate on getting back. And then we we tried to close off penetration, and we knew they'd get some some three point opportunities against our zone, and and they hit you know a high number. I mean, you know, I thought we was contestant contesting okay but I mean I guess we'll have to look at the tape in case we play them again and do an even better job but you know taking that penetration or trying to take the penetration away and then uh, trying to take the transition uh, you know leak outs or whatever you want to call them away was was vital too and they're still going to get some every game I mean they're they're too good not to but you know those were a few things we tried to key on sure and like you said you know well 
going to what uh, more to your players. I tell you, Massey had a big game and getting on the boards and defending too. I tell you, defending the paints always a big deal when you're playing the Tigers because they get those slashers and Pavy, both the Pavy boys and the White boy, and yeah. you know just all those players that just go and jet through the lane. And he did a good job kind of sealing that off. They're extremely quick, and you know. And you know it helps when you're six foot seven and can and are you know smart and don't foul a lot and yeah that helps a lot. He makes he makes us uh, tough to score against. And but the other kids did a great job too closing out. I mean, uh, you know the Skelt, uh, Patrick Skelton and the two Reeves boys and Glover and Vance. I mean they all did a. We had worked all week on on uh, closing out and decreasing the gap sizes for them to penetrate. You know. And, uh, you know, we did a decent job at it. You know, there was a couple breakdowns there, I think, in the third quarter. Uh, you know, we when, <laughs> when that game got to uh, – there were so many emotional highs and lows last night, and that game got to uh, going so – not frantic, but it was so intense. And, you know, we would get excited and run out there and, you know, maybe not be in a great stance or a great closeout, and they'd get a step on us, you know, and it got – you know, they picked up some fouls on us on them baseline drives and stuff. but. For the most part, I, I thought the kids uh, played hard and uh, executed for yeah. the most part what we're I, trying to do. I thought you really shot the ball well, uh, better so than you have you know, earlier in the year. I, I thought you were right in some games, but uh, the shots just weren't falling in some right. previous games that you could have pulled out. But last night, big shots. I know the Reeves boys hit a couple big shots. And yeah. I tell you, just seeing any time you all needed a bucket, you come up with a big one. Right, and it, it was kind of like that the whole game for both teams. It seemed like when one team would – it's kind of a game of runs, you know, and it seemed like they'd go on an 8-2 run or a 6-2 run, and we'd go on an 8-2 run. I mean, it was just – yeah, that's, that's kind of a testament to the players. They they showed some mental toughness on both sides. And, and uh, you know, it's always a battle when we get around each other, and it's always a lot of fun. And, you know, the uh, – the, the emotional highs and lows last night were just unreal how they swung and and like you said it was just and it was different guys stepping up for both teams and just getting a bucket when you're like saying that you're sitting there thinking in your mind we got to have a bucket here or, you know when Risco had the ball and they were probably thinking we got to have a bucket here somehow they'd find a way to get a bucket so it seems like and they they made some nice runs especially in that second half they'd make you know, two or three shot, difficult shots, and then y'all would answer right back. It's like anything, you know, anytime you see shots going in with the difficulty that they were right. shooting with, and then y'all answer right back, it just seems like, man, if they're hitting those shots, it's going to be tough. But right. y'all, y'all come back and just answer right back. Right. So they just and went back and forth. Yeah, and then, you know, it helped that we were at home, but, you know, they were just, I mean, like you said, shots just falling. They'd go in spurts three minutes where whoever touched the ball and shot it got the shot off. Like you just knew it was going in, you know, and then they'd have spurts where they got a little cold with the same for us, you know, too. But, uh, oh, yeah, like you said, some of them shot. I mean, they can score. They can just flat out play, period. I know, you know? before the end of the third period, I think uh, Risco got a big bucket and y'all come down and was trying to rush up a shot before the buzzer. And I can't remember who got the shot off. But right before the uh, third period, he just throws it up from about – 12 feet out and yeah. nails it. Well, that, I mean, he was off balance, just threw it up, and then it went in. I was like, well, it might be one of those nights. <laughs> well, and that was that was, a, that was Chase Davis, and that was a huge shot. You know, he's been uh, practicing real, real well lately and has started picking up some more minutes. And, you know, he didn't play timid when he got out there. You know, that's tough for me to look at you after you've sit there most of the game and say, hey, get in there and do something good, you know. And, and he did, man. He didn't play scared at all, and he got in that lane. and launched that sucker up and it went in and like yeah boy just like we drew it up man good job <laughs> so, I mean, it's a broken play you know and he just right. got in there and made something happen and uh real proud of him and uh it was a good you know good momentum swing I mean I'm not sure it was I don't know if it was a turning point of the game or anything like that but it was like hey that helps every point helped last night you know and yeah. that was huge so um but, yeah, I can't get over how them runs were. You know, there in the fourth, we were up by 10, I think, at one point. And I was sitting there thinking, man, if we just take care of the ball and execute and keep getting it down low, we might push this thing up to to a decent margin. And that's when that Pavey kid went, you know, ballist, you know, nuts and was going, doing whatever he wanted. And I tell you, he would – He'd find a spot right there behind the three and just rise up and just nail it. It was just unbelievable yeah. to watch him last night with the difficulty of shots that he was that yeah. he was making. And uh, you know, 
that type of game that we've seen quite a bit from Hawkins over the past few years. Of course, the past few years had a young team, and they're kind of ma- finally moving their way up to be juniors and seniors <laughs> now. But I tell you, you've been in games like that over the years, and you just—it seems like you just couldn't ever, couldn't ever pull out the win against right. those big team, right. or big you know big teams like that. And it just kind of came all together at once to to get a big win over Risco like well, that last night. Yeah, last year, you know, we won. We had a great season last year, and we we just couldn't quite get those those huge wins that could be like a staple for your program or whatever. And you know, this year we've we've got a couple of those, you know, and and we want more, of course. But I mean. We've had one or two of those, and uh, you know it makes you feel good. It, it, our fans were great last night. It's great for the community. It's great for the kids, the school. It's just great for the school. Period. You know, helps the morale, and and uh, you know when you got a good group like this that that uh, come in and put the work in and want to do well, just lifts everybody up a little bit. You know. Sure. Which you know Hawkins, you know, getting out there more where people are seeing you all a lot more, especially being in the Bloomfield Christmas tournament over the past few years. Played it once again this year and got to play all four days. So you know that's not a not a bad deal to play all four days in the Bloomfield tournament. Yeah. Well, we love the fact that we got in that thing, and uh, you know I don't think if you know our first ten games this season were just dog fights. I mean, tough. You know, and then you throw in the Bloomfield Christmas tournament, and that is a uh, you know that's those are tough games, and those are nice crowds, and they're. You know, it's like I tell a kid, those are almost district. Mm-hmm. They almost have a district tournament feel to them because of the crowd. And, you know, if we're not in those games, I'm not sure if we're um, able to, to hold our composure like we did last night. If we don't play in those big games like that and get used to doing that, and, and you know, it's just a blessing for us, really. And, uh, you know, I tell them, the tournament directors up there at Bloomfield all the time, man, we really appreciate this. and. Just a great experience for the kids and, and helps us, makes makes our season. Even though we went up there and had a couple of tough losses and like you and me were talking earlier, probably not our best games up there at Bloomfield, you know. We were kind of getting some guys back into place and gelling, still gelling. And we'd had some adversity earlier in the year, you know, where we had some guys kind of injured and out and and uh, not 100%. We were kind of coming together, but those first 10 games were just you know, dog fights, and it, it was it was good for us. You know, for the later run. You know, especially last night. So. Sure. This thing, you know, you look at the teams that play in that. You know, your Porchville, your Bernie, Kennett, Dexter. All these teams have historically, traditionally done well in postseason play and conference play. And I'll tell you that Bloomfield tournament has to play a role in that. Like you said, playing in big games for those four days, it kind of prepares you for that element coming down the end of the year, playing in big crowds big uh, you know just big games period right. so you know that, that's starting to translate to you all as well being yeah. able to play in big games later on in the year and if you look at the four teams we played up there I mean yeah we weren't just in love with with how we play but we were our goal is to play all four nights and play on the winter side and that's what we did but we got to play Malden you know who was starting to come together and they've been playing they've been playing really well mm-hmm. you know hats off to coach Sokolov and his kids he's done a great job there you know, and they're a young team and they're playing uh, playing well. And then we got to play uh, Dexter, you know, right when they were starting to click and starting to get better. And, and they played us, they played well that night. And uh, then we got to play Haytai again, another class two team that's very good. And then, of course, Bernie, the last game, you know, and they got us that last game. And, um, you know, that's. It's just uh, Those very tough helpful. teams. Yeah, it's, all it's, four tough teams. That's and what and I was not every year you're going to play Dexter. You know, that's, yeah, that's right, a big game right, for y'all. Right, that's a that, – they, they bring a different thing. You know, their toughness and strength was something we don't always get to see, and I think it was good for us. I mean, after that Dexter, after that week, man, we had some real heated practices and, you know, kind of led into some practices where, you know, we were really getting after each other and, you know, we had some guys pushing and shoving and, and uh, you know, you kind of like to see some of that competitiveness every now and then, and I think that really helped us, you know, so – yeah, uh, you texting your girlfriend or something? No, no, we got an email in. Yeah, I got a good friend Tommy Jacobs saying congrats to <laughs> Coach McGroove on a big win. <laughs> uh, Tommy, uh, not my girlfriend. <laughs> I don't blame you there. No, no, I'm just kidding, Mr. Jacobs. You know I'm messing. With you. <laughs> hey, like good old guy. Tommy. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, but uh, you know, going forward, you know, you play out of the class two, and it's you know pretty much 
yourself and risk going and you know we've talked about gideon coming along having oh, a tough man. thing you, you got to win over gideon earlier in the in the week so uh you know gideon's starting to come along no pun intended but that was a dog fight at gideon you know we were they played us well over there and they uh coach Brees, he had a he had a nice game plan that kind of threw me for a loop really uh run something we hadn't seen yet and i wasn't prepared for and the kids weren't prepared for so hats off to them too he's got a fine squad no doubt so yeah uh and as we mentioned you play out the class two tough district yeah. playing down there with uh, bernie portageville and hey hey south pim starting to roll south pim starting to play uh, better coach bidwell he's doing an excellent job down there so, so it's, it's gonna be a tough district down there yeah, and no you, you're gonna be right there in the mix so it's uh, you've played Portageville at third place earlier this year, yeah. and you know it's you, you, you struggled in that game, but you came right. back in the end. So you know right. you got some confidence coming back uh, from that win, uh, from that loss with Portageville. That you know you've got the the ability to play with them, especially late in the game. And you know Bernie's going to be right there. He played them in the Christmas tournament, so you know you're going to be competitive there. So uh, you're going to be right there in the mix in that yeah. district. So it's going to be fun to watch. Oh, it ought to be a fun week. I mean, just. Can't wait, Bart Scott. Can't Bart wait. Scott, you know. can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's what's some games you got coming up? Uh, let's see. Next week, or well, we're off Tuesday. We play uh, Clarkton Friday at Clarkton. Another tough conference game. Uh, you know they'll be jacked up for that. I saw them there scouting uh, last night as well. And then we've got uh, the week after that. We've got a three-game week. We've got Campbell Tuesday, Cooter Thursday, and Delta C Seven Friday. Mm-hmm. So that'd be a busy week. Uh, the next week and then our our JV is in action uh, this week at the Campbell JV tournament starting Monday okay all right so we'll be looking forward to seeing how your season turns out and I you can you know starting out earlier in the year you know I could tell in the games that you played it's like well you know Hawkins not quite where they want to be yet you know they're starting to put it together and well, I tell you, put it together uh, at the right time. Last night against no a big, a team no bigger than the Risco Tigers, of course, ranked number one in the state in Class One, and getting a win like that in conference, I tell you, that's big. So, uh, yeah, the team's starting to put it together now. It looks like uh, it. It uh, you know, when you got a good group of kids, it's it's fun to it's fun to just be around them, you know, and start watching some things gel. And you know, we usually typically do start off a little slow early in the year. It's just you know, I don't know, maybe something I'm doing wrong or maybe something we're doing wrong in practice, but, you know, I don't expect us to play flawlessly early in the year. And, and you know, I'd rather us be playing playing our best here, uh, you know, later in the year, hopefully. Hopefully it continues like that without any hiccups. Sure. All right, we'll be surely uh, watching the Hawkeye Hornets closely in the Tri-County Conference. That's going to be fun to see how that turns out in the end. Uh, could possibly match up with Risco <laughs> once again in that tournament. And where's the tournament this year? It's at Clarkton. Clarkton, okay. Tri-County no. Conference tournament in Clarkton. That'll be coming up probably uh, three weeks, maybe two to three weeks. Yeah, the week of uh, February, I want to say right around the 14th to the 18th. Okay. I'm not sure on the dates, but that's I, I want to say that's it. All right. And we'll be looking forward to that down at Clarkton and also the district tournament this year. Uh, playing out of that Class 2 District 1. And at Hayti. That'll be at Hayti this year. So be looking forward to seeing how the Hawkeye Hornets fare this year. So congratulations on the win last night. We appreciate you taking time with us this morning and sharing about your win last night and your season thus far. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how, how the Hornets do this year. Well, I appreciate it. I always enjoy coming. And, uh, you know, just uh, if you guys, if anybody wants to check us out, hawkehomeschools.com. Got any questions, emails about any camps we have for our younger kids, uh, you can email me anytime at the school, smcbroom at hawkham.k12.mo.us. Well, um, again. Dot, or smcbroom at hawkham.k12.mo.us. <laughs> I had to do it You didn't you. know I could start that <laughs> off that fast, did you? I, love, I, I just love those schools' emails, yeah. about k12.mo.us. Yeah, I think they're actually <laughs> called periods. I'm not sure what you know, dots, but... Uh, but no, and uh, you know, a big thank you to my, our kids and our fans uh, thus far this season, um, and uh, the support. My administration got a great administration there at the school. Uh, love working there at the school, and underneath them, great school to work at. And uh, you know, just uh, happy to be there and enjoying my time there for sure. It's been a blessing. Good deal. Yeah, it's always uh, always good to work with good people. So yeah, no doubt. It sure is. And uh, say say hi to Tommy out there. 
<laughs> Say hi to my wife and my baby at the at the house. They're watching on the internet. Good so, deal. All right. Uh, she was a cheerleader last night. My little baby daughter oh, sure. was. Sure. Uh, yeah. By far the, in my opinion, the cutest little baby in the world. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you, Seth, and right, we'll thanks. be uh, watching you going forward. Appreciate yeah. your time. Appreciate you. All right.